Well, my buddy Dave and I are going into Jeffrey's, the number one antique gallery. It is one of the biggest antique malls in Ohio and really anywhere. We have a whole bunch of fun things coming up because we're headed to a huge antique show in Ohio. Oh, that is cool. The Rookwood piece? Yeah. It's faded out. I think it was 300, but it might be it might be 250. Oh, you can read something on there? Oh, well, I've Jeez, worked Your eyes are a lot better than mine. Mm, it's because I worked in an antique mall a long time. I'll record it and then we'll be able to blow it up. Priced correctly at 250, but that is a great piece of rookwood. It opens up into a cigarette dispenser. Polo and golf 1930s for those who were still making it, I guess. So that was local. I did not realize Oceanic was a local yeah, that's Scott and Dylan. They're out yeah. of Detroit. Huh. Interesting. And that seems smaller than usual. Yeah, there's a... Usually I see them, they're like that big. Huh. The difference in size can make a big difference in price because of scarcity. This is a really cool space, actually, overall. I like the green regular clock. I'm, I really don't look at clocks like that very much anymore, but that's really interesting with the old paint on it. And Charlie's Tavern is cool up there. Well, Dave may find something here. We'll find out. In the meantime, I'm going to keep looking because he looks for specific things and I really look at everything. And so I need to get a little bit ahead of him because he will soon fly past me. He won't be looking at a lot of this stuff in booths of glass and china and the kind of things that I also make money on. These are bands. Rare bird, Steppenwolf live, interesting trash can, but it is just a little too damaged. 35 would be a great deal otherwise. These are pretty fun for $10 each. I think I might pick these up. These are dealer photos. And yes, they were laminated and they're funny at the margins, but I think that could be framed out by somebody who liked them. And the 68 Cutlass is kind of a good car. Oldsmobiles are no longer made, of course, so that makes these somehow a little more interesting to me. Escape from the Ordinary. This one has a tear, so that's worth leaving. Oh, my father had this car. He drove it into the ground. The Jetstar was considered a good model when it came out, but this has a little bit of a chew at the top. Darn, the best ones, of course, are not in great condition, but that's why they're $10. I still think there's money in them. Handsome scale, a little over restored for color, but this is very nice. 550 for the machinist cabinet. It's a Gerstmar. Dave and I actually just sold this clock together last year for about $145. This has a shape. $50. It is definitely vintage. It seems Italian to me. Is there $100 in that and will that not blow over if I take it to Springfield? Hmm. I have to think about that one for a minute. I wish I saw a sale sign. Ooh, big and heavy Roseville. Roseville did these window boxes like everybody else with the see-through. This is later production, probably 1946 or so. $90 on that is probably about the right price. Ooh, I like these tie racks. I'll show you how this works in a minute, but Dave's calling me to show me what he got. Uh-uh. Nice call. See, Dave is so knowledgeable about this stuff, and because he focuses on one thing and specializes in one thing, he really knows it. So he called me over to help him look this up, and he can sell it for about two and a quarter at a show. Now, if you saw this for 110, would you think that was a thing you could make money on? This is why it pays in some ways not to be like me, but to really specialize in something and get to know it well. BPO Elks Lodge, and this is tacked with little reflector balls that are mostly there. Well, since the Elks Lodge in Centralia used to be an antique mall and the guy has turned it into an Elks Lodge again, it's actually a hotel, I think he would really like this and I think this is going to sell for a lot more than $40 where I can take it, especially if I oil it up and clean it. So that's going with me. It's so nice for a change. I sold a bunch of stuff at Rosie's Auction House Teak Stock event this last weekend, so I actually have room to buy some things. If I had the shot glasses, I'd pay $25 for that. One of the first things I collected, 1930s barware. It takes the long, tall, narrow shot glasses that were issued right after Prohibition in various colors. This thing down here? Yeah. That's really like interesting. A nut or something. What would that hold? Oh, did you swing? Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's got a cushion in it. It, it wouldn't be a purse because it's fitted for holding yeah. something. Let's see what the tag says. It's really bizarre. Oh, a sewing basket. Of course, that makes yeah, sense yeah. because it would fold open oh, and then all the implements yeah. would lay out in yeah. all of that. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Thanks for taking it out for us. Not a problem, guys. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I just really noticed this chandelier. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, I'm looking at that. 
Mansion. Yeah, no kidding. With all those little glass pieces, probably done in Czechoslovakia. I know the lamps that were done with these little flowers put together and wired or European. And there is Tiffin's Twilight. That is their Alexandrite glass. This was from the 1950s and 60s, and that's when Alexandrite glass first became a phenomenon. That was understood to change in different kinds of light between fluorescent and natural light, depending on what you shine on it from a purple lavender to a blue. Hey, we're in Findlay, Ohio, and I had forgotten there was Findlay glass, and they actually made a lot of things back in the Victorian era, and they've got a whole shelf full of it here. Six panel compote in the back, $14. These pieces are not really expensive because the time of great collecting of such has passed us, but it's so interesting to see something that's from the area. Now, there are still some patterns like Klondike, that are fairly sought after. It seems that anything in the yellows in the Victorian glass, even this particular style of flash. This is a nice old piece too. This is the Finley Onyx. This was their most important artware line and it's $115, which is a fair price. You see the opalescent faceting in the flowers. That was a hard thing to achieve because the chemical process that causes that to happen at the edges of things. So to make it work through the glass like that was a trick. So they make some really very nice things. This bottle here, $425. This is very, very scarce. This is all thinly on this shelf too, except for the ceramic base, of course. There's their shoe, which Fenton patterned after a hundred years later. I like the saves there and especially the globe in the middle, the still bank there. This was a 60s, 70s phenomenon. I remember when I was a kid, the globe trotters lamp. I did not have one. Priced at 175 now. It'd be a great thing in a sports den, right? We we're in Ohio near where McCoy was made and this is the closest yet for being able to resell a rustic set. A little more than I can pay, but that's the cheapest one I've seen in a long time and it looks like it's in great shape and the darker green, which I like. Always like that set of glasses. Doesn't that seem cheap for a toy? That seems really inexpensive, actually. That looks like that might be pretty good buy. Sky Rangers, yeah. Uh, that seems really cheap. Let's look. I wish I knew who got this. Well, I mean, I know who got it because it says it's old. Well, I didn't know you had there before. I thought you'd enjoy this place. Yeah, this is a great place, Dave. I'm glad you brought me. And I think Heart of Ohio is open till 6 o'clock. Harborware. Chromecraft. Indianapolis. This is nice. I'll take that. Man oil and Barclay stuff from the Second World War. I'm looking for the one that's got the person holding the propeller up. Oh, I've never seen that one. Tough one to get. Yeah, I don't see one in here either though, even though they have a good selection. These days the old Dutch beer panel insert might be worth getting. It's got a few little chips. This is a fun display. I remember sulfur fascinating me as a kid because we got it at the San Diego Natural History Museum. I never thought of wanting a turnstile before, and now I do. How much is this? I have no reason to get it and nowhere to take it. And it seems as if you can get through for free. I don't see anything. Thought they'd at least charge you a quarter. Wow, there's a lamp. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a little different. <laughs> that is. I could see that selling in the future. I wonder how much maybe the future is now. Let's see how expensive this is. 125, they call it 70s. I think it's more 80s, 90s with this color combination. It is a fun look. What would that have been? Would that have stood up on top of the cash register and a holder or something? I think there might be a thing on the back that you stick it to the wall. Oh, okay, like yeah, a plaque. I didn't bring my topper gum machine this time, but they want 145 for theirs. I might have to lower the price on mine a little bit. K. Illinois is a ghost of its former self. This is a very hard bottle to find as a result. This is about the time that the railroads were replaced by bridges, and that was near the end. What do you mean by square corner? That uh, tobacco box, they're called square corners just because they have square corners. Because You know, like that uh, Oceanic we saw had rounded corners. Right. So that's called a square corner. So people prefer rounded now, or? No, not particularly, but square corners used to be really hard to get and very expensive. That one's pretty cheap, 59, but it's not in good enough condition. They even have the westward hoe in the blue with the horses on it. That's almost always brown. And this is actually a really 
inexpensive uh, price on this these days, $39. I mean, those are actually selling for nearly double that. I probably should get a tiny mite. I haven't had that for a while. And Hubley made the GE Bank. Yes, I've always liked that one. Wow, if you're just looking for glass, well, there's a little bit of it here. Here's the Kanawha pitcher that you see in Amberina, usually in blue, occasionally in a smoky brown for $29. Their prices are fair, and they certainly have selection. I like time card cases, and 169 for this rather handsome wooden one seems like a rather pretty thing. Perhaps you could rig it up to just use as a clock in a house, and for that price, that seems like a pretty good deal. Here's a bunch of these fraternal order vestments and collars, particularly the odd fellows with the three interlocking rings. These are going to be very inexpensive here because this is where a lot of these organizations were that have now disbanded, but I find them interesting. They don't sell fast, but when they sell, they all sell at once, and they're kind of a cool look. And I'm going to pick a few up here. Number 159, the symbology of them I think is interesting. And there's some fringe. An old crusty one. This one's got another design. Yes, I think I'll take a few of these. I didn't even look back there. Yes, they have all of the vestments. They must have cleaned out a whole uh, lodge or at least somebody's. Anderson, Indiana, manufacturer of society goods. $59 for the off-white velvet robe. These are really, really quite attractive in a way as vintage clothing. $49 for this. Now these with the metal fringe are more expensive and that is typical. Yeah, that's really pretty cool actually. Little holes in that one, yeah. And then this is a VFW welcome flag. Those can be worth a little bit of money if that would clean up. Yeah, that actually is, it's a little stained and one little tear, but it's not in terrible shape. How much is that one, I wonder? Oh, they've got a bunch? I'll bet one of them is better than the others. Always look, pays to look when you have a pile. Yeah, that's the cleanest one right there. That one for $29, if the corner isn't too horrible, I think that might be the one. Boy, they have a lot of interesting things like the platters here for the Odd Fellows. This is the Fort Wayne Consistory. They have a bunch of fraternal organization things. And another rack of the clothing. Look at the great shape. This just seems like it would keep you cozy and confined and focused on your work. I don't know. I've always liked this shape in a desk. And it is priced at $6.95. It looks like something from probably the 1940s with that metal galley that seemed to be popular in that era. Yes, more robes. I wish I understood this better. I don't want to offend anybody's sensibilities by putting one on, and yet I think they're really neat looking, and I could see wearing them as fashion. I mean, this looks like something out of Sgt. Pepper's, and it's $48. Motto wear, a cute trivet. $24, that seems like a good price. I don't see those often. $48.50 on the pitcher seems just fine, especially with the rooster. This place has two wings and we will not get through all of them today because we do have to get on and get ready to set up for a show, but I am so glad to get a moment to bring this to you. And if you would take just a moment to please hit the thumbs up and like this if you are enjoying it and leave a comment and please do subscribe if you haven't it's free it doesn't cost a thing and we'll be able to let you know when we're doing more fun things cambridge made this really pretty glowing almost opaline color of blue in the 1920s and i've always been really partial to it it's a little bit iridized and it really is very good quality. It reminds me a lot of Stu Ben Glass of that time. These are really handsome, these two Royal Hager pieces. Somebody must have spent a lot of time in the Philippines. Oh, Philippine currency, huh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of this was um, issued, of course, under our government and the Japanese government. And then they were independent, so I guess all of it just was sitting in vaults or something. None of it's terribly expensive, but it's good graphics. I'm a sucker for these silly little crocheted shaped 1940s and 50s hot pads. 
covered by 1920 dipper foam was rocking, rolling, and wave action. How cool! What? Wow, this is an interesting piece. Of, somebody in 1928 rigged this up so that it could go through the waves. Leslie Meyer, 1928. This is cool. Yeah, to have something that was just the only one of its kind. Uh, I, I would own that if I had the money for it. I do like it. They have some pretty decent prices on these in the box, these model engines. 55 and 60 and 65. Some of these larger ones can go for double that. This is a very dark and foreboding Victorian drop front with old fabric as curtains in the doors. This looks like it came out of a spooky house somewhere. I'm thinking Beetlejuice? Cherry Desk 1800, 695. It is solid as can be, and it is interesting with the horseshoe. I'm not sure what to think about the original finish. It's so very dark, and it's definitely crackled and sooted, but it is all hand-pegged, so I think you'd want to keep it. Perhaps you could clean and oil it so that it would be just a little warmer. And I'm not sure about those curtains. Wow, only in a few years. I sold that for about $50 three years ago, which was the going price, and then now that's at 85 and I'm pretty sure that's the going price. This place is really, really colossal, and there's a whole book dealer, too. And so we're going to definitely have to come back to this place. Another huge, great antique mall in the middle of Ohio. It's an amazing place to go shopping for this sort of thing. Another piece of Hager in the middle there, flanked by Weller on the right and Blue Mountain Pottery on the left. $75 for the Hager piece. These are 35 each. Hmm. These are not Blue Mountain Pottery. This actually has a Danish mark. Those are pretty neat. The Theodore Roosevelt 1906 tip tray, $180. And then the one on the right is Taft and Sherman in 1908 who followed Teddy Roosevelt and then who Teddy Roosevelt helped escort out of office. This is a great sign because it's a 1950 patent with this insert of plastic. $750. Been repainted. Oh, that is cool. They put the kick in gasoline. Auto pep tablets. Oh, that is neat. The graphic is great. Yeah, it's too bad it's a little weak. It just sat in a garage too long. We are in farm country, and so you're going to see a bunch of true scale tractors. This is a different brand than the hurdle that you usually see, and they have some really cool pieces. Here is some Viking Ruby, and this is actually pretty early production in the Epic line, this basket here. $25, that actually seems like a pretty good price. It does go to an amber at the bottom, so technically amber, you know. But look at this, this is the Janus pattern, originally from when it was New Martinsville glass. Went bankrupt, reconstituted, but they kept making a few of the patterns, and this was one of them, and it's got the original label, and what a gorgeous color. $25. Nice substantial piece of glass. And then the little piece here, only $10. And it is a very low bowl in the Epic with those three little toes, just like the flower arrangers of the early 50s. So some cute early pieces of Viking that you might not be familiar with if you only see swung bases. I've seen a few good globes here, and I like this one with the lucite or acrylic base. I think Lucite. $44. And we still have the USSR, so gives you an idea of the era. A tumbling churn certainly was easier than having to plunge up and down in the old home style one, so this was an improvement. $265. Old farm equipment like this seems to sell in this price range just because it's neat looking and people with big old farmhouses like to have it as display. Back here, a pair of very nicely handcrafted crutches for $33. Much lighter than the kind you get from the doctor. 55 on this. This is the McCoy with the angelfish, and the green is one of the earlier glazes. This is early 1930s. And I have to admit, I'm very fond of bluebird transfer wear. This is something that was very popular around 1910. This is priced at 
$89. It says it's Brush McCoy. It does have a crack here, unfortunately. Cambridge nudes in the Crown Tuscan are just not very easily found. And Cambridge is not too far from here in Ohio. A lot of glass aficionados come here, so these are priced high. But it's $450 for the candlestick holder pair. Very, very hard find to find. The globe vase is $185 and the cordial with the yellow bowl, which is unusual, is $90. Blue and white granite ware and the dark blue, which is even harder to find. Really? What'd you find? Ooh, the shape. Yeah, it's some great shape. That's shapes. really neat. Oh, and it's the Pan Am Expo. Yes. That's that's World's Fair, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, that's good in a whole lot of cross collectible ways. That's excellent. Chamber stick holder from the Syracuse Hotel Wear. That's like in New York. Funny to think you might have had to use this at one time. Eighteen bucks. Oh yeah, space shot. Hmm. I mean, they got a good look to them. The, yeah, they are cool looking. Let's see what else they have in there. They've got the mod watercolor set. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at these. I haven't really run into these before. Sherry Lewis and her friends, 1965. Wow, look how different she looked back then. There's Lamb Chop. This place has so much variety. There is just a ton of stuff here. And I can't wait to come back and see more of it. Twister game. <laughs> Little set of brass sailboats is $42, which is only 10 a piece. Those are kind of cute. This is the part of the country that this is the most widespread and the easiest to sell. The, the prices are still low. And considering it's 150 years old in some cases, they're a great deal. $12.50 for the vegetable bowl there. But these days, people seem to prefer these giant Lazy Susans. This is Rio Grande Ware of Dallas, Texas. You almost never see anything by Rio Grande Ware. At least I rarely do. And it's $78. It is a giant, giant piece with the original tray. The Gillette case is I prize, but a hundred bucks. That's what they're really worth. Here we go. A ceramic Christmas tree that you didn't have to make yourself. You could get it in a box even back then. $198. If they always said they wanted a Cadillac, well, here's your chance to get one for 50 bucks. I really like the Clorox sign next to it. The graphics are actually surprisingly pretty for bleach, and that's from the 1920s. A really old John Deere toy. This is cast iron from the 1920s. And inside it says Vindex cast iron is something that's, gosh, 100 years back. And then the fact that it's an obscure toy maker makes this one pretty good, $625. And I like the Panapet radios behind them, but they do not have their chains. And they're priced at about $32 each, which is fine for their condition. These birds say they are from Florence rather than Murano, but aren't they beautiful? Florence, of course, is the big art center, so some production of studio glass in that area as well 195 columbia bank lincoln national bank of fort wayne there had to be lots of little banks that could issue money back in the old days before people could get around and money could be distributed safely these pieces are very collectible now prices between 40 dollars and 250. yeah i like that piece too well, it's got all these little like things that go on a bracelet or something. Oh yeah, this is jewelry maker or someone. Oh, someone had a charm collection and various. A lot of this is newer, but does that all come with it? Five fifty with all the doodads. Yes. Spool cabinet with charms. Five fifty. I mean, you know, the charms probably aren't worth a lot, but if you could sell them all for a dollar a piece, you'd get the case for free. Yeah. Well, I like the case. case I really do like, like the case. Too. Yeah, yeah, someone was making charm bracelets and this was their work cabinet. Huh. I've always liked this particular Ochner style. It's just fat and plump and I imagine full of water would have been very refreshing or lemonade on a hot day. $69. This is by Morgantown. Ochner was the designer. It's part of their crinkle line from about 1960. Great color. The banjo clock with Mount Vernon on the right is from the 1930s and they are generally working. $65 is the standard price. On the left is the light of the picture of Jesus for $85. Coin collection. I had those when I was a kid. Oh, really? Oh, the mystery coins and the international coins. Things I had as a kid. Well, yeah, you know, I think a lot of us make up for it as adults. If you didn't get to have a lot of stuff when you were a kid or you got a lot of it taken away from you. 
The beginning of Halloween, $50 on her. Boy, she's multicolored and buy still from the 70s and very creepy. I haven't had that in a really long time and not with that many pieces. Yeah, it's got everything. I've only had the the guy in the juicer, not the glasses and not this other individual one. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I have not had a cattail lamp in a few years. This one is 95. The Spartan Tartan Ice Chest from about 1960. Great looking little early cooler made of metal. A lot of times they're rusted out. This one's in pretty decent shape for $125. $30 for the satin biscuit jar with lid. The quilted jars just don't sell for a lot right now. The newer ones. And then this Blue Ridge China set is Stan Home Ivory. And that was for Stanley Home Products. They were door to door sellers. And so this was something you could order through them. It's one of their plainer patterns, but still all hand painted and all those great shapes, especially the cream and sugar bowl. 145 for the entire set amongst the Fenton artware pieces from the 80s 90s and beyond the penguins are the most unusual that would have fit a family collection that we used to have $250 but very very hard to find the ebony glass and then the favorine with the silver overlay and it's sand carved back so very difficult and not very many made that was the Cape Kennedy playset after they renamed the base Lewis Marks. Yeah, I wanted to have that set when we lived there. Even in the 50s, the Jolly Ju Green Giant was not particularly modest about his dress. This is a restored 1955 era Ford truck with the Green Giant brands. 250 for the police siren. 115 on the candlestick phone. Seems like a good uh, deal, but no dial. This would clearly be from a Ford tractor and not the tiniest Ford car in history. This lightning rod is only $55. Well, now I'm glad I passed up the one that was 65 the other day. This would be really fun in a boudoir display. Revlon eye makeup, and I suspect that there's probably storage behind here. And that this is a store display. Yes, there's your little doors, so. That's kind of a neat thing, but 165 is definitely where it should be price-wise. And then this is really neat fluorescent tube but tv lab with the clear cover that is just really strange and interesting and they are looking for five hundred dollars for that my dad worked for gold batteries long after they were just about batteries all right well we found some stuff how'd you do dave yeah great it was fabulous for our first stop yes yeah i guess an onward and upward so where we're headed next Wapakonana. okay i don't even know how to say that so i'll follow you okay <laughs> if you enjoyed this video check out this one also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our patreon our memberships we've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content also please do check out our website theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help and we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon bye for now